So welcome back, everybody. Firstly, uh, today's your test, Kislev, and with Yontif, as it's known to be Rosh Hashanah L'Chassidus. Rosh Hashanah Teva Tikhoseva L'Sei Chaseinu, which is written and inscribed in a good and sweet year. And uh, to have a year of passion, which this is the great contribution of, of the uh, Yudhis Kislev, which is represented namely by the uh, Tanya Hasidus in general, and Tanya in particular, which was meant to ultimately bring, allow the person throughout his journey, and sometimes a complicated journey in, of life, and without any specific complications, the journey in life as the Neshama enters into a body, into Elam Haza, into this physical world, which there's always challenges and obstacles. And this was the point of Hasidus, Eir V'chayis Nafsheinu Nitanlonu. Light and life, vitality, passion and Teir Mitzvahs, despite the uh, being submerged, submerged and uh, or perhaps uh, anchored into the realities of Ilam Haza, a person could be is able to throughout stay focused, throughout stay focused on his mandate, Alea <clears throat> Domes in this world, which is a point of Eir Vachayis. It's not something which is new. It's just uh, the Teda is given on Har Sinai thousands of years ago. The point of Chassidus was as an expression of Eir Vachayis Nafshenu Litamono, very brief. If you have everything, um, the light doesn't create anything new. It just opens up to the light that we're able to see what exists. And similar, chayis, life, vitality, you have somebody who is complete. And on the surface, you can't see the difference between, uh, even if he's lifeless, all the limbs and everything is there. But so chayis is something which, again, brings life in something which pre-exists. And similar life and light, so this is the point of Chassidus, nothing new, but it takes the same Teda and infuses such Eir and such Chayis, so this is a day of Eir Chayis Nafshein and Italon, we should be ins- written and inscribed in Hashanah Teva Masukha, we should be able to Betech Simcha V'tuv Livav, joy and, and elation and gladness of heart, and with, uh, namely with passion, or together with passion, uh, uh, continue to serve the Beira Elam HaKadosh Baruch Hu again with uh, from maintain our focus our important, our important mandate of making this world a Dira, a home and a boat for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. so as uh, we continue we'll hope that maybe perhaps today we'll be able to finish this long chapter of Chavtes um, it's been uh, I believe that there was uh, most classes on a particular Peirik but again we look forward finishing this Pedic today. So we're holding on page 74. <clears throat> you could uh, see the corresponding English text as well. Um, so we were holding by the Ukemeshe Matsinu Dover Zem Furish B'Miraglim Beteda rather. As we find this explicit in the Teda, <clears throat> what, what do we find? This again, everybody's welcome to look back at the previous uh, classes. Um, um, and then again, in the re- f- focusing specifically, uh, and in this case, focusing on the previous classes which deal with these, with this, uh, this subject, which the Alter Rebbe is con- has conveyed and brings a proof to this, or demonstrates this very point in the Torah when it comes to the Meraglim. Uh, you could see it in the previous classes on the koshertube.com as well as. Um, the TanyaOnline.com with the advantage that there is a, has the text as well, a very organized class by class, and again, the website is solely about this class <clears throat> of the uh, Tanya. So what the Altarebbe basically conveyed in the previous classes was, and again for this he's trying to show, to prove, and to relate to us this above mentioned how it's explicit, or point out how it's explicit in Teda by the a story by the episode of the Meraglim. So the Alter Rebbe points out that in the end of the day, the the um, stand-up of Klip and Sitracher, it's all about chutzpah, the 
voice, the opinion, the determination. It's a chutzpah, like the Pasuk says, If you'll arouse yourself like a, uh, you'll arise rather like an eagle, from there I'll bring you down. <clears throat> because this uh, arising of, of uh, klipa, sitrach, and other the voices and the opinions and the signals of the spirit of impurity is all about chutzpah, because ultimately any mulvadi, it's about a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And Hashem's uh, objective, Hashem's goals, <clears throat> but who brings down? So, so then again, the pasuk says, "Hashem Hashem, I'll bring you right down." But who causes this eritcha on the heaven, on on the uh, on high? The causes the eritcha, now is the bringing down the klipa and the sitra achro on high is caused by the yid below. When the yid makes that, uh, when yid, yid is stay, able to stay focused and understand that it's a wave of cheshech. Which Hakadosh Baruch Hu, as we said, Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave the they gave the ability for this darkness to confront and to challenge the Yidden as Avedus Hashem, <clears throat> despite that it has a great force and a great uh, potency. Because as Alter Rebbe po pointed out, that this is a, a force which vitalizes so many parts of Ilam Haza, everything which is formerly impure receives its life and an energy from the these keiches, these uh, impure forces. <clears throat> as we again elaborated on this in the previous class, explained this uh, above mentioned this ladder clearly. <clears throat> um, and together with that, Hakadosh Baruch Hu allowed this darkness to test and to challenge and to place obstacles in front of man, in, in, uh, in front of the Yid, in his Aved Hashem, in front of anybody, and particularly the Yid in his Aved Hashem. Yet the Yid knows that it's all about Cheshach. And I just have to turn on a light, and I have to stand with my determination. I have to stand with my, um, with my, f with focus on the objective and goal why I'm here. In other words, to further implement my my determination that I will go on despite the cheshech, despite the darkness, despite this ob obscurity, and able to stay stand with uh, with clarity and determination to continue my learning Teda and doing mitzvahs, with that I open up a light and immediately the Cheshach is gone. It says even though Cheshach could be darkness, could be very intimidating, but how do you fight darkness? You just strike a match, you open a flashlight, you, the darkness dissipates completely. And momentarily, you dispel darkness with light. So in, in the onset, it could be very and intimidating, and it is. But once you put, turn on a light, it ultimately, this, you dispel it and ultimately it, it disappears at once. So when the Yid does this down here, and he he is 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 um, he's able to he's able to uh, stand with that uh, sense of clarity and determination as Avedus Hashem. So he annuls, he opens a light, he he dispels the darkness on this level, but consequently and instantaneously on high as well. It arises with chutzpah, but Hakadosh Baruch Hu brings it down. Because in the end of the day, it's all about chutzpah. Because that's the point of chutzpah. Chutzpah says that it's, it, it, everything's very clear. You know, someone's chutzpahdik in a certain class. In a certain, you know, what, what do you think you're doing? Which means there's nothing to stand up for, and there's nothing to oppose. Everything is clear. We're learning. Everybody's participating. And someone stands up with chutzpah. That's the point. Or a student or any. What's the point? The point is that everything was okay. Everything was normal. It was truly normal. You get up just with chutzpah. So, what is, so chutzpah has to be just put in its place. Similarly, elokus, godliness, God and godliness, that is what is real. Anything which stands up to God and godliness by virtue is chutzpah. So again, we, 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 we expounded on this idea past classes, but... In, in, in this case, it's worthwhile perhaps to see the previous class in order to understand where the Alter Rebbe is going with this. <clears throat> but the Alter Rebbe says we see this all explicit in Taira. <clears throat> by the Miraglim, by the spies, the famous spies, they went into Israel, they were sent by Maish Rabbeinu to scout Eretz Yisrael, as, uh, to give the Yidden the report prior to entering Eretz Yisrael. Uh, in, in, in or that was the plan. When Yin came out of Mitzrayim, they were supposed to immediately after Ramtei to go into Israel. So he sends the spies, and they come back with this r terrible report. And unfortunately, this caused chaos, and this caused catastrophe. And unfortunately, <clears throat> it caused this caused uh, uh, um, uh, further catastrophe. Also, 
This was the night of Tisha B'Av, as we know, Kodesh Baruch Hu said, you're crying in vain tonight. This will be an evening that you will cry generations to come. Unfortunately, we're still recuperating from that very incident of the Meragli. So the very, very, it had been a very, by definition, a very sad story, uh, which uh, at the time, but as well, was a this um, brought consequences to generations to come. Unfortunately, we hope we come out of it very soon, as we come back into Yisrael Hashlema, complete Yisrael together with Mashiach. But in the story of the Meraglim, when they came back with that report, what did they say? Not only they said that the the um, the kings, the monarchs, the the uh, society in Yisrael are mighty. <clears throat> robust, strong, gigantic, and <clears throat> it's impossible for us to conquer them. And they came back with a very um, intimidating, or a scenario which was very intimidating. But one of the things they said, <laughs> This is, these people are very uh, strong, uh, which can have two connotations. Mimenu could mean from us, as the Jewish people, <clears throat> but Mimenu also, as the Talmud tells us, they were re referring to as well Mimenu, which we could refer to a third party, a singular third party, which is referring to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They said that Chazok, that the, 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 um, the, uh, the, uh, the strength and energy in Eretz Yisrael is stronger, uh, more than, a, even, and even stronger rather than HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. God forbid. Like the Gemara says, Atikro Mimenu. And again, the Gemara learns from the word him. Mimenu, they're, they're referring uh, nothing. Uh, um, believe it or not, they're referring to Hakadosh Baruch Hu himself, or the unbelievable. They were referring to Hakadosh Baruch Hu himself. Hashem. They didn't believe, or this was the message they expressed to Yisrael of a disbelief in uh, uh, not believing in the ability of Hakadosh Baruch Hu to conquer the the might and the forces of Eretz Yisrael and that's what happened but if you look further in the Pasuk after the incident after Kodesh Baruch Hu demonstrated his his, his uh, wrath his Charein Af Rahman al as a genuine Charein Af which, which uh, Kodesh Baruch Hu says <clears throat> Uh, demonstrate his anger towards the Meraglim himself and towards Am Yisrael, as we just mentioned before the different um, expressions of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, again, namely as translated by the, in the Talmud by our sages of blessed memory and HaKadosh Baruch Hu's, the, the formal rebuke HaKadosh Baruch Hu has, uh, of, of the Jewish people the need, or HaKadosh Baruch Hu established that the Jewish people will be in the desert for another 40 years corresponding to the 40 days that the Meraglim despise were in Eretz Yisrael, Yem Lashona, every day corresponding to another year. <clears throat> and it was not when the Jewish people, not and other things which which took place then, if we know this, remember the story with the Meraklim themselves, as they were, <clears throat> their, of their penalty, of their punishment. So after HaKadosh Baruch Hu demonstrated his wrath to Am Yisrael, if you look further in the Pasuk, they all gathered together and they said, they re with inner regret, and in a remorse, they all gathered and they said, we're going. We are going, and not only that, they started ascending the mountain towards Eretz Yisrael. And we know in the end, <clears throat> they, it was uh, too little too late, as the expression goes. And uh, Yidin do not have their own Hatzlach, their own success. Whatever they do, they have to have the Yad Hashem, and the hand of Hashem was not with them. And uh, unfortunately, they were defeated. But the, but after but one, what the Rebbe is trying to point out over here that after this whole after Kodesh Baruch Hu replied reacted to this whole episode of the Meraglim or to the whole report of the Meraglim and the reaction of Am Yisrael they all gathered and they said Hinenu Valinu that we're all going we're going up to Yisrael and the question begs didn't you say that it's a place that it's so uh, strong and so mighty that God Himself cannot handle, that God, God Himself cannot override the strength and triumph and override and be victorious over the strength and the might of those who represented, of the, of the forces who represented, who were, were in Eretz Yisrael and represented the might of Eretz Yisrael. What is this Hinenu Valinu? 
It's like a fire. This fire is going to be able to consume everybody who settles into the fire. So stay away from the fire. And then all of a sudden, we're entering to the fire and we're secure and we're certain that the fire is not going to burn us up. You just said it's fire. <laughs> it's fire burns and fire consumes. So what are you jumping into the fire? You just pointed out clearly to yourself and to everybody that this fire will consume you. So what is this Hineno Valina? Why are you going into that same fire which you just said that it's a fire that consumes? You just said a Kodesh Baruch cannot handle them. Which means that if we'll enter Yisrael, we will lose the war. So why did you, why did they all gather and say, Hineno Valina, the same people who cried and said it's impossible for God even to handle these mighty enemies and giants and so on. So why did they say Hineno Valina? And they started heading towards Eretz Yisrael. It wasn't they just said, verbally said, we are going. They started heading towards Yisrael. What are you heading towards Yisrael? You just said yourself. And you got to convince everybody. And these, or all those who were convinced on the matter, why are they saying in Enevalino, God can't handle it, so stay, stay put in your place. Which tells us that when they said in Enevalino, they did believe that it'll be all right and okay. So now to the best mind, from what, at what point did their faith come back? Bichelus Hashem in God's strength and ability. Meishar Beinu at the time did not show, demonstrate to the Jewish people any sign, any wonder, any miracle. Bein time in between, in other words, in this whole, in, as this whole uh, incident was unfolding, to say that they saw this godly new great miracle, which they said, Nah, God could do it. Look at his might. You know, generally, the point of a miracle is again to remind us, because there's always a part of us who knows the Yichelus Hashem. But a good miracle, a person experiences a good miracle, oh, a new light opens up. But in this case, there was no new light opened up. Moshe did, did not show them any new miracle which should again convince them perhaps <clears throat> to retract, to convince them that it, it will be okay and retract in the previous words. So what all of a sudden did they start believing in Kodesh Baruch You just said, or you were just convinced that God cannot do it. God cannot do it, Rechman Islam, God forbid. <clears throat> and the answer is, Raksha Amr Lahem, Meshav Benu told them, Meshav Kotsav Hashem Aleyim, how Kodesh Baruch Hu got angry at them, Benish Bashal Elavim Al Ha'aretz, that he promised, he swore that he's not going to bring them into Yisrael, but he's not going to bring them into Yisrael. So that's what happened in between. And that's what they said, Hinan of Aldina were going up to Yisrael. And the question is, my husband, what is that help? If they did not believe in the ability, in the koch, in the strength of God Himself to conquer the 38, 31 kings, and we know the 31 kings were dominant in Yisrael at the time, and if God cannot conquer the 31 kings in Yisrael, what is that help? The fact that Meshav relates to them that Hashem is angry and Hashem swore that He's not going to bring you into Yisrael and your children will enter Yisrael. Again, as the entire, as the parasha relates to us, what Meshav Abinu conveyed in the name of Hashem, that you are not going into Yisrael, your children go into Yisrael. And it will be not today, not tomorrow, not a year later, not a decade later, it will be 40 years later. So you heard that. And you know Hashem is upset at you. But if you, fundamentally, do not believe that God could do it, that God has the ability to override that these 31 kings which were, which were present in Israel at the time. So what, it, what, the, what does that information help you change your mind <clears throat> that at this point we know God can do it? Why does that information, why does that information or that ex experiencing this, the, 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 the anger of Hashem or this hearing, <clears throat> learning of the, the anger and the wrath of Hashem and HaKadosh Baruch Hu's oath that He's not going to bring that to Yisrael, what does that change your opinion on the ground of God's ability to override the 31 kings? He can't, He can't. So what are you saying? Let's go. Why are you starting, why are you heading towards that Yisrael? Which you just established that HaKadosh Baruch Hu cannot override these 31 kings, God forbid. And that's the reason why you demonstrated that you don't want to go into Yisrael. Because of that very notion. We will not be successful. Because God, God forbid, cannot do it. So what happened? What happened all of a sudden? And the answer is that this is the point. The darkness doesn't have its own, its own kayach. It's about the absence of light. And it could be very intimidating 
<clears throat> and it could present an, an enormous obstacle in our sense of, uh, of clarity, in our straight, straightforward thinking. And that's the point of chutzpah. The chutzpah is something which is irrational. And as he goes on over here and he's explained, the levada is certain. Yidin, by definition, are believers, sons of believers. And in essence, every single Yid believes in the Ebishter on a constant basis. And he knows the Ebishter is a koil yochel, that he can do everything and anything at any given time. Because he is God. <laughs> it could be 31 kings or 31,000 kings or more. If God decides to override, obviously it happens in a very quick time. And it could even be in a very miraculous manner. Because he's God. And a Yid believes in God. For the Yid... A yid, by definition, is a mind in the mind. Yidin and a whole are called maminim b'nei maminim. The believers, the sons of believers. And the problem was, at this point, the energy, the negative energy, the impure energy which is invested in their body, arose on the light and the purity and the emes of the sanctity of their godly soul, b'gasa s'rucho, v'gab huso, b'chutzpah b'li tamvadas, with its crassness, with its ego, with its, rather, with its haughtiness, its narcissism, with chutzpah, with audacity, with, any, with a, 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 a audacious reaction without any rationale, without any reason, without any knowledge, b'li tamvadas. And that's what happened. And that obscured the purity, the emiss of the Yid. They didn't, a Yid doesn't really need a miracle if you're looking on his core essence. His core essence is one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So by definition, he's a Maim and he believes in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's just the chutzpah, the darkness, the obscure, the, the representation, obscure presentation of the nefshel, the, of the sitra uh, achra, of klipa, the negative forces, which rise like with chutzpah over the emiss of and the ayin and the lichtikait and the light and the purity and the clarity of the which which is uh, the, the purity of the uh, of the nefshalikis of the godly soul and the clarity which the godly soul constantly maintains. And therefore, at that point, Hakadosh Baruch Hu just had to bring down that chutzpah. And how did Hakadosh Baruch Hu bring down the chutzpah? Or rather, or as, as the expression of the Al Tereb of Lachain, and therefore, Miyachu Kotzav Hashem Aleim, right when Hakadosh Baruch Hu ang- was, it demonstrated his anger on them, the heating bekil Rash Veregiz, and he he screamed, if you will, use expression with a s- strong, loud, and an angry voice on them, on Am Yisrael. Ad Masay Leida Haro Hazay says the expression of the pasuk is till when Hakadosh Baruch Hu tells Meishah Ben until when with this evil or bad congregation <coughs> continue to tantalize <coughs> me and my presence and my kedusha and be a constant disturbance, an obstacle, a challenge to my divine plan in bringing the community to Yisrael. But mit barazei plupigreichem, as the Pasuk says, HaKadosh Baruch says, in this desert your corpse will fall. Ani Hashem dibartim leizeis es, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu swears to that that they are not going to Eretz Yisrael, etc., as the continuous psukim verses in this very chapter. So Rachman at that point, at that point, because Baruch Hu said it in a way of Shvua, uh, And when Yidin heard these very difficult words, these very strong words, these very clear and determined words of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Nichna v'nishbar libam b'kirbam that is what subdued and subjugated and nishbar is broke shattered their heart shattered their heart within themselves within their midst b'kirbam within themselves Kidiksiv like it says they mourn very much and Wednesday once they were nishbar once you brought down the chutzpah once you brought down that nesha, that eagle, which again, which is the impure forces which arise like chutzpah misham erit chunum Hashem, it's brought down. What remains? What remains when you open a light? What remains is that you see with 100% clarity what truly is. Everything is there before you. Walk into a dark room like we learned before. We said, no, no, before. Ein v'chayis nafsheinu nitalano. 
which is again associated with it today, the specialty of today's day. Everything is there before. Again, we said in the context of Tehidah Mitzvah, it's, it's nothing new. Chassidus didn't come to point out something new. It, becomes, it came to open the light to see with clarity what truly exists and what truly is. But let's apply it to what we're really not to go off. No, let's rather apply it. This is the same point, but let's rather apply it to this, to this page over here. That when you open a light, there's nothing new happens in the room. You have a room which was full of beautiful furniture. And a room very, which, which, um, and a, a pleasant a, a room which <laughs> entering would on its own be very pleasant. There is a, a nice uh, for, if it's furniture and chairs and tables and couches and everything is pl it's a pleasant room to be. But when the light is off, you don't see what is. You don't see the truth. You don't see what is real. It's dark, and again, maybe even intimidating to walk in there. The moment the light goes on, the moment you take you dispel the darkness, nothing new happened. It just whatever it was two minutes before remains there. Uh, it, it, it continues to be in the same exact form and fashion at this time. The good thing is you're, you're able to, or the difference is you're able to see it, able to identify it, but nothing new happened. Nothing has changed. The Jew is a believer, the son of a believer, and he knows about the Kayach V'chelis HaShem at all times, because that's who he is. It's not something new. The essence of the Yid is the essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Chelik Mal is a part of God. Consequently, he believes is a Maime Be Maime. So everything, this, so the Emes of the Yid is about Emun and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The problem is that it's darkened and it's obscured and eclipsed with this whole presentation of the Sitra Achra, but it's about Chutzpah, it's an irrational Chutzpah. It's an audacious Chutzpah which rises like an intimidating darkness, open the light, bring out the, the dispel the darkness, all of a sudden you see the true picture of what really existed all along. And that's what happened. Moshe didn't have to show them a miracle. Hayid is a maimin ben men maimin. What, the, what Moshe Rabbeinu, again, through the message of, of these, the message of these psukh, or the message of a which comes, comes uh, which is um, in the, rather, in these psukim, in these verses, what happened was HaKadosh Baruch Hu just brought down that chutzpah. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu demonstrated that anger, his anger, his godly anger, his genuine anger towards Am Yisrael, what it did just brought down the chutzpah. It removed the darkness. What remained was the good old Yid, the Maimin ben Maimin, if he's a Maimin ben Maimin, automatically says, he I believe God, you can do it. Let's go to Yisrael. I, I, I so regret, and I so re I have such remorse on what happened in this last, <coughs> how long it lasted, hour or so however long it lasted, the whole episode with Miragam, in other words, upon their return. As per their return. Once <clears> the <throat> Kutch Baruch brought down the chutzpah, the Yid automatically says, Hinen Avalinu. <laughs> but how are we going to handle it? Sure, we're going to handle it, because God is, God has the ability to do anything, at any time. So Hinen Avalinu, we're going to Etz And they started heading towards Etz Yisrael. Again, it wasn't just a verbal proclamation, but they started heading towards Etz Yisrael with a strong and cl clear belief and again that sense of purity and clarity that it could, if it's God, sure he could do anything. The problem was in the end that Kutch was not with him and it was too little too late. So as the story continues, but from the Jewish perspective, they mourned very much and when they mourned in their heart, they had a broken heart and a broken spirit. Memele, consequently, so the energies and force of, of, of um, impurity <coughs> fell from their gavhos, from their from their uh, or memshal, memshalto, from their with from their dominance, and they were crushed from their dominance and from and the gavhuso, and from their um, from their um, um, up, uh, uh, from their gavus, which means from their hardiness, or from their uprisal, on the gasus rucho, and their cr the uh, crassness of spirit, as instantaneously, as instantaneously, instantly rather, <coughs> instantaneously, rather, came down on this level, and again similarly, or simultaneously, or instantaneously on high. Sitrachah has come down from its memshalo, its gavhuso, and gasus So what remains? 
remains is that pure Yidale. Yisraeli matzma maminim maminim Yidin believe and continue to believe to the extent they say Hinenu Valinu because we have a God, a great God, and a uh, and a and a um, and a and a, and a, and a and a God which by definition could do and he can do and can triumph at any time in any in any um, in any state in any situation at any time. And what is the lesson of we learn from here? Mizet, that every yid, every person could learn from this whole story and from the whole message, namely from this whole message, that it's not something, uh, the emuna and Hashem, believe in a Baruch is not another layer which you have to introduce or you have to place upon the yid or you have to introduce to the yid. This is who the yid essentially is. Which is a total different idea. You know, a yid has to be maimed to find a muna in a kodesh baruch. A kodesh baruch, by definition, doesn't really have to uh, perform a miracle. A kodesh baruch does it periodically, anyways, because he wants to elicit within us not only our muna on core essential levels, but he wants us to see and walk together along with him and to see his presence on a constant basis, and consequently um, er extract from ourselves more and more passion in our connection to a, to him capital H to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to God, by our learning Torah and our doing mitzvahs and our davening and our doing milz chasadim. So he, he does that again. We know HaKadosh Baruch Hu does that individually as we all know it if we're only honest with ourselves. Probably doesn't go through a 24 hours. A person with a straight, healthy focus does not see the Ashkocha Pratis, the clear, divine um, providence in his own life. Besides the fact knowing that everything is about God and God is God is uh, everything is God and God is everything because as uh, it says Asarma there's nothing else in Eignovade. It's the energy of God which continues not only in the six days of creation, but it goes Baruch Hu's energy is of the soul energy which continues on an ongoing basis. Baruch Hu continues to infuse in creation not only every day, every second, every moment that Baruch Hu continues to infuse his creation his energy, which ultimately makes Makes, bring creation into being <clears throat> from a state of I into a state of yes, from nothing into something on a constant basis. Hence, the only reality is the godly reality. He knows that deep in his soul. But um, more than that, he's a yid, if he's only honest with him, he sees, he experiences, he's able to pinpoint with his finger, wow, that was Ashkoch Prat, what divine providence, on a personal, on a personal basis, and a community basis, and all, and all of Am Yisrael as a whole, HaKadosh Baruch Hu so often throws in these uh, overt Ashkoch Pratis, and overt means to say that, that we could, we could, we can see them with our own physical eye. This was nothing less than a divine intervention, and many times grand miracles that Kodesh Baruch Hu appreciates so much to do for the Yid, because he wants, again, the Yid to be connected, to continue to walk along with him in this Derech HaMelech, in the way of Tayyid Mitzvahs, again, with Chayis and passion. But a Yid really, by definition, really doesn't even need those miracles to be a Maimon be Maimon, because the Etz and that's who he is. So if a person has Sveikas in Amunah, this is the message. When you have one person has doubts in the faith of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, in his faith, in a Kodesh Baruch in God, which periodically happens. As for a human being, especially we have a Nefshah Bahamas, an animal soul, which continues to constantly throw his, his, the, the, its own signals. Again, it's signals which disturb us in our learning to it, in our davening. Again, it means a slice to be laid back when it comes to doing what Hashem wants. Or, God forbid, to violate something, to do something, or to speak something, or think something, to look so, every, in, in a place which a Kodesh Baruch Hu, in places where a Kodesh Baruch Hu does not want us, again, to do, to speak, to think, to look, etc., etc. So he constantly sends us the signals, and we also, we, and, and, but the Yitzhak Tev has to over, always is told to, this is our mandate to over, to try off over the Yitzhak Hara. So part of it, and again, to, to his thought, speech, and action, or his action, speech, or even thought should be com com completely <clears throat> aligned with the Ratz and Hashem, with the will of God, but together with the package, with the signals of the Yitzhak Hara, sends us, he then periodically sends us, sends us signals which, which, which obscure the Emes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which place doubts, it throws a suffix, a doubt in the in, in our amuna. Is there a God? Chas v'shom. Or he doesn't go there <laughs> from me. He knows he goes there, but is God really looking? He God really knows. Is God has really the ability to do that? Could he save me? Could he cure me? Could he bring me my parnasa? Or God forbid not. 
That's called spekus and emunah. Not chas v'shalom questions even the, the, the reality of Hashem. But, is, but does God permeate this whole reality? Can you really make a difference to me? Or maybe God forbid the opposite. So this is part of the signals of the Tahara. It's not changing your suffix. It's not the real you. A yid never has spekus and emunah. A yid never has doubts in faith. And therefore, if you think, how do we counter spekus and emunah when a person has doubts in emunah? It's not that he needs another miracle. Could be another miracle will will probably allow him to refocus. But that's not really what is needed. Because he, a yid, is always shalim in Amunah Hashem. He's always 100% complete in his faith to God. But what he needs is just to put things in perspective. I am a maimin. These sveikas in Amunah, these doubts in Amunah, is just another signal of the Yitzhahara. So what do I do? Just like when the Yitzhahara says, do that, speak that, look there, I turn the other way around. And I don't do what the Yitzhahara says. Similarly, when he sends a suffix, when he sends a doubt in my faith, I just have to bring him down. I just got to open up a light, which will dispel that darkness, and all of a sudden, I will see everything. Or everything which was there a minute ago will come just to the surface, will, will come to full state of manifestation. Because I don't need to do anything new. This is, this is, this is who I am. A yid is a maimin be maimin. So he says from this, all this that we learned in this <coughs> chapter, and in this again, in this particular story, the, the episode of the Miraglim, <coughs> what we could learn, Lumut Kolodim, everybody could learn, when Shunefim, when when in his thoughts enters doubts on faith, Gehim Divir Ruach just it's just expressions <coughs> and presentations of the evil force, Levat, Solely that, a magbi atzma anafshi, which arises, arouses, or rises, rather, rises on his soul, tries to triumph, tries to overtake his pure <coughs> edelist soul, which is a nefesh, a nefesh, a chelik, a mamash, a soul which is part and parcel of God, which never has doubts in a moon of Hashem. Not only doesn't have that, it is part and parcel of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Does God have faith about Hashem? Obviously, He does. He is God. And the Yid has a part of God. It's a Pasuk in Teirah. As the Pasuk, Pasuk says in Tanakh, Nefesh Chelik Lekami Mal. A Yid is a part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So by definition, it is a Maimon. And when a person has Vegas and Amunah doubts and his belief, and his genuine belief in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's just messages of the Sitra Achra. By definition, you really don't need a miracle to counter that. Like in the story of the, of the Miraglim, Meishu Rabbeinu didn't show them a miracle. And by definition, we hope that Kodesh Baruch Hu again does with his part to make it easier for us to remove that layer of obscurity which, which blocks and covers the purity of our souls. So we see, ask Kodesh Baruch Hu at times to show us an overt miracle. And Kodesh Baruch Hu is ready to do it for us. And he does it for us on a constant basis. He wants to do more for us as long as we let him in. But by definition, to get, to get rid of that, to override and overcome those asfekis and amuna to doubt someone and believe in a Kodesh Baruch Hu, you just put things in perspective. It's just another dosage of darkness which settled on the purity of your, nefesh, of your, of your soul. Open the light and it dispel the darkness. You remain with the same healthy emuno as a Yid, a Jew, which is a Maimin de Maimin. Al Yisrael Atzmon, as he says, <coughs> but the Yid himself, Mamini, believers b'nei Mamini, and more than that, here Dalt Rebbe, and this will conclude the chapter, here Dalt Rebbe introduces something very interesting. And he says, not only Yid is a Maimin, say, guess what? The Sitar Achra, the pure forces, also have no doubts about the Yechelis, about the absolute omniscient, uh, uh, um, uh, of, of a strength and Yechelis, and ability of a Kodesh Baruch the omniscient powers of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It doesn't have any doubt at all. It's the Tzitzit itself. And the only thing is, we'll just try to say it orally before we find all the text, it says that it just has the mandate mission to confuse the Yid in his Avedis Hashem. So, and, and, and El Terebe brings the famous, um, like Mzor HaKadosh, it says an interesting Zor, that the uh, that the uh, king wanted to test his prince, his royal prince, and to see his uh, loyalty towards the king, towards his palace, etc., or towards uh, the uh, the, um, <coughs> the monarchy, the uh, healthy monarchy of the of the uh, the king, and again in the environment. 
So the king presents, uh, takes a uh, zona, which is literally translated as a harlot, and tells the, tells the harlot to persuade the child, the son, to see if he's going to maintain his loyalty or not. So it says, in number, so the, 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 the harlot itself knows about the koyach, knows about the, uh, the koyach of the king, or the, the prestige of the king and the royalty, the monarch, etc. <clears throat> it knows very well. And it, it, it has no doubt. And in a sense, it's, it's loyal to the king as well. But the only thing is, it had a particular mandate, this particular mandate, to persuade the prince to, to, to extract, ultimately, to extract the loyalty of the prince, or to see, to test, the lo to, to test and examine the loyalty of the prince. So the, the harlot itself is very loyal to the king, and it knows very much about the king. And it knows as much about as much as about as much as about the king as much as ultimately as much as the son knows about his father as the prince knows about the king. The only thing it's sent, unfortunately, it's sent with a mandate to persuade, to try to test and examine the child, this prince, to see if the child is loyal to the king. <clears throat> and 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 unfortunately, the presentation on the surface is something which challenges the loyalty of the prince to the king. And the and, and there's more than that. What is he? What is the the the, the Zayna herself? What does she want? In essence, the, she also wants that the prince should overcome her sedu her seduction. That the prince should overcome her presentation and say no to her and continue and maintain a steadfast loyalty to the to the monarchy. She also wants that. But on the surface, she presents herself in such a way that is really enticing and in really uh, testing and really challenging to the, uh, to the prince. So she knows very well, and she's a very loyal uh, messenger, which is, again, all about her. If you look at it, in, the, in essence, all about her is a, a, a complete um, expression of loyalty to the king. But on the surface, the veneer on the, the, ex, the, ex, the, the externality, the external layer, uh, which means the, her presentation is completely antithesis to what the king stands for. But namely, she's only here to test the child. And again, the second step over here, and he points this out in the Zayar, that she herself wants and is so eager that the child, this, the, 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 the prince, should overcome this test, overcome this temptation, and, and, and ultimately, when the, the prince will do so, deep down, even though on the surface she's presenting something totally different, deep down, she has this inner contentment, an inner calm that the prince has not um, gave in, has not succumbed to this temptation, and does maintain the loyalty to the, to the uh, palace, to the king, or whatever the king stands for. This is the Moshe in Zohar. Similarly, the Mosaya says that the Sitra Achra, the presentations of the impure forces, they also have no doubts. It's not only the Yiraz Amaymin ben Maimin. The Sitra Achra knows where things are at. The only thing is, it's given a mandate to confuse and to camouflage and to confuse the Yid in his Avedis Hashem. <clears throat> but again, the whole point where the Kodesh Baruch Hu does this, Wow. Why does the Eibishter allow the Yitzhar Hara to be so present in our life in the end of the day, which is not the subject directly over here, is because he wants to give, that, we, that he wants that Avedis Hashem should come from us. This is part of the mandate of making Kodesh Baruch Hu Dira B'Tachtainim, an abode in this lowly world, that it comes from the Tachtainim. We're not programmed from above, like the angels and so on. We're not programmed above just to do good. The Kodesh Baruch Hu wants it to come from us, and the only way it can come from us is when the Kodesh Baruch Hu allows the Yitzhar Hara, he gives us each one of us a Yitzhar Hara, and allows the, 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 the evil forces to present a different picture and a different image. An eclipse on the truth. So when we do the, when we do what we have to do, it's coming from us. It's our choice. And that's part of, again, Akash Baruch's master plan. So that's, oh, in this case, in this case, and again, directly, we're dealing over here, David Hashem gives the Yashus, gives the ability, we give the permission, like in the Mashal, like in the previous parable, give the permission for the Sitarach, the level of impure, for the impure forces, rather, the impure forces to persuade and to um, um, blur the Admas Hashem from the Yid. Individually and collectively, time is thrown. But what is the sitracha true? The sitracha on its own, that has no doubt of the greatness and the ability, the kayach, 
Vikaich of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Has no doubt. And the second step as well, it it is so uh, determined, or rather, it is so eager. Better word. It is so eager that the Jew ultimately stands steadfast and brings it down and opens the light and dispels its own darkness and demonstrates the clue, true clarity. And in this case, of Umunus Hashem. Believe in God and everything, which is a line. We believe in God, and again to the Yid, his complete, steadfast devotion, and a con with constancy uh, of his commitment and commitment rather of his learning Torah and doing mitzvahs, davening and doing mitzvahs, etc. So let's see. Inside says, "Begam asit rachatz man." And let's fake his kolim. But even this, the negative forces also don't have any doubts. Actually, need to know the shus leval v'la adam. It's given. It's given. The permission to dis to to distract the person, to confuse the person, mirma, words of lie and words of um, disillusion, words of swindle, with words of swindle, but in the end, laharbe so he does mention this idea, which we mentioned before, to increase in reward <clears throat> which the Yid has so much reward. Besides, he wants it to come from the Yid, it goes together, when it comes from the Yid, with his own freedom of choice, despite these confusions, and despite where these presentations of lie and swindle, the Yid stands steadfast as Amunas Hashem, and again, whatever comes together with Amunas Hashem. <clears throat> so this is, Lahar B'Shore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, increases in his reward. Ki pituye hazeyne l'ben amelech, like the temptation or the or rather excuse me the presented presentations of temptation like the words and the 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 words of capture which the Zaino the harlot tries to capture and, and seduce uh, the the uh, Ben Hamelech the prince of the king Beshekir Mirma in other words her words her swindly words or presentation of lie and a presentation of swindle and ultimately she does it with a complete uh, okay and permission and mandate if you will of the king like it says in Zayra Kedesh but she herself knows that she's a shliach she's a messenger of the king and in the end of the day if it's about the king she deep down is so interested nothing less than interested and more so than eager that the, 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 um, the prince uh, stands steadfast and overcomes these temptations, overcomes these tests. And similarly, in this case, the Sitrachar so desires, it knows about the presence of a Baruch. And the only thing, the reason why it presents on the surface a presentation which is so antithesis to the genuine uh, sanctity or the, 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 uh, the divinity and sanctity of a Baruch is just because that is its mandate, but because it knows that it's its mandate, in other words, at the end of the day, it's a mandate given by a Kodesh Baruch Hu. <clears throat> so it itself wants that a Kodesh Baruch Hu should prevail, and in this case, God should prevail, and in this case, the Yid should overcome all these challenges, may it be as Sveikis and doubts in Amuna, or any other challenges. And he stands again com with complete determination <clears throat> and resolute, to stand with joy and elation and, of, and gladness of heart <clears throat> in his Aveda, in his Amunah, in his belief in God, in his Aveda Hashem, learning Torah, doing mitzvahs, gmilus chasadim, davening, etc. Have a wonderful day.